In this lesson, we'll discuss the basic principles of parametric objects in 3D software. After that, some quick notions about fong shading and other simple stuff, but important to understand early on. Let's get to it. 3D applications allow us to generate a wide variety of basic shapes, such as cubes, spheres, and cylinders, to name a few. These are called primitives, and there are a few important things we need to know about them. All primitives are procedural, which means the computer generates them using a bunch of algorithms and a set of dynamic parameters. It's just a fancy way of saying that they're mathematically produced. They're simple, easy to use, and serve as an ideal starting point for most basic objects during modeling. Because they are procedural, primitives have a set of attributes that we can easily modify to change their geometry. Some of the more notable ones are the number of segments, for both height and rotation, and different fillet values. Primitives are also not editable, which means we can only modify them through their attributes. If we want to change their points, edges or faces individually, we first need to convert them into editable objects. As mentioned in the previous lesson, some low-poly models can benefit from a shading technique that removes faceting and smooths out their surface. In Cinema 4D, this is called Fong Shading, and it works by establishing the angle at which smoothing can occur. Let's take a closer look at how this works. Here we have two connected quads, with Fong Shading activated and an angle limit of 45 degrees. If we start to bend the two polygons, the surface remains smooth. When we go past the 45 degree angle, however, the Fong shading breaks. We can simply increase the angle limit to make them smooth again. But remember, the limit can also be too high for some models. Going past 89 degrees, for example, will lead to bad results in most cases. It's all about balance. Sometimes, we might find ourselves in situations where we want specific edges to be smooth and others to be sharp. We can achieve this in two different ways. The first one is by selecting the edges we want sharpened and manually breaking the font shading. This is the quick and dirty way, but it can also be very useful in certain situations. The second one is by adding extra edges. We can do this with any modeling tool available. By doing this, we're forcing the smooth transition to occur in one small area, leaving everything else nice and flat. Alright, that's enough of this one. Next up, cameras and projections. Don't forget to leave a like.